Welcome everyone to a brand new show. This is going to be a GVN and Pete's Basement collab show called Figure It Out. We're going to be talking about exclusive figures and whatever else we want to talk about uh, within that realm. Uh, first, let me introduce uh, Pete from Pete's Basement. What's going on, man? What's up, buddy? Happy to be here. Enjoying myself on this Tuesday. And I brought with me my good buddy, Jay from JD. Let's try that once more. <laughs> my shows, though. Damn it. Did you, did you start tricking I'm so used to editing. <laughs> I brought so my boy, JD, unstoppable. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a sip. I'm going to take a sip. Yeah, no, that's, that was my problem is I tried to do this raw, and I didn't sip it yet. I should have <laughs> sipped it. <laughs> Uh, Juwan, happy to be here, and my boy JD Unstoppable from Unstoppable Comics, because he's a huge Joe fan, and you and I got to talking via text the other day, you're like, let's just do this on a show, I was like, all right, let's do it on a show. Yeah, no, absolutely, so me and Pete were doing um, the Marvel Cinematic Review show on Saturday night, and all I kept paying attention to was the Arashikage tattoo that Pete has, and I couldn't find a way to work it into the show. <laughs> So as soon as we, we, you know, we yelled cut and we ended the live, I text him immediately and was like, is that, is that what I think it was? And he's like, yeah, of course. And I was like, we need to talk. Shout uh, out to my man, Snake Eyes. The tattoo artist is actually named Snake Eyes. It was B-52 tattoos in Brooklyn. Awesome. Uh, I, he might have retired by now. I think he has and moved away. But he was a staple of the neighborhood for very long. And I said, if I get one tattoo from this guy, it's got to be this one because he was going by yeah. Snake Eyes long before G.I. Joe was ever a thing. Right. I never got yeah. the story of how he got that name, but yeah, he was like the, the generation dice. for me. You I dice, did say, you I did dice. Do with dice, yeah. But um, no, so the first thing I want us to break down is uh, first thing me and Pete got to talking about was the new G.I. Joe um, spinoff Snake Eyes film that's coming out. Which again, I don't know why they, it's yeah. like G.I. Joe's Snake Eyes. Like it's a soft reboot, eyes. basically, because we right. never actually saw Snake Eyes' face. So they can pretty much make him anybody. And this was my contention with the whole okay, thing. Okay. So I want I want to get right into that. And let me start off by saying when they when they casted Henry Golding, I'm a huge Henry Golding fan. I didn't mind it, right? Mm -hmm. The problem I originally had wasn't that they were going from white to having both Storm Shadow and, and Snake Eyes being being Asian. My original issue was Snake Eyes took a vow of silence and he wears that mask all the time. There is no, it's like Halo. There is no like, all right, you know, we're just sitting in like the break room. Let me take this off. No, right? So I'm like, you pick one of the more handsome guys <laughs> to try to convince me that you're going to have him shut up and cover his face for, for all of the, the movie going forward, because obviously this is about the rise of Snake Eyes. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking more to the G.I. Joe team up movies to where it's like, well, you you shouldn't have him talking ever, you know? So it's like that casting was a little confusing because I'm like an up and coming actor. Henry Golding's really good. If any of you guys have seen The Gentleman um, with Henry Golden, uh, Golden. Love The Gentleman. It was great, right? Yeah. Yeah, Loved he was dry it. eye, which is great. Yeah. A great transition. He goes from dry exactly. eye to being snake eye. It's, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. So to me, I'm like, he has a promising future. How would you select a role that's going to tell you, hey, you have to shut up and you can <laughs> never show that beautiful face of yours? Like, don't ever think you can show it. So you got to ask Pedro Pascal. That's true. That even though Pedro yeah. Pascal, like, they quickly that's went true. away from that. It was like he will never take it off too. One episode, just one, one one per season. I'm good. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> no, but you know what's crazy? Yeah. I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it till they said he wasn't going to take it off. Because as far as I knew, the Mandalorians was from what I saw from Clone Wars. So to me, Pre Vizsla always had the fucking helmet off. So I was like, what's the big deal about having it on? But it's when they said, oh, he's never going to take it off. And then they started having him take it off. I'm like, I don't get this. But um, no, this Snake Eyes movie looks like a lot of fun. Um, one of my biggest issues is how quickly they shot this movie. Um, they shot this movie relatively quickly, small budget. I think they shot most, if not all of it, in Japan. Um, uh -huh. What was the shooting they, time? Four the weeks, six time, weeks? It was, 
within two months, I believe. Two months, maybe two and a half okay. months. Like it was honestly, it felt like all right, they started filming and then I blinked and they were like, all right, we're rapping. Wait, what? <laughs> what did you shoot? Um, right. So the cast is amazing. I love who they got for Storm Shadow. That is the best casting I've seen in a long time. Um, Andrew, who is- Who's gonna be Storm Shadow? Uh, Andrew, he's from the show um, Warrior. Uh, the Tellings of Bruce Lee's, uh, Bruce Lee's okay. uh, book. Um, he plays the main character in okay. that. Um, so I'm really, really, really excited for him being Storm Shadow. Um, let me pull up the cast here. Hold on. Uh, Pete, I I'm going to go to you first because you had a lot <laughs> of issues with uh, some of the casting for this movie. So I'm going to let you go ahead and lead us off. All right. I'm, I'm going to just go off on a rant here and I'll, I'll try to keep it as contained as possible. But <laughs> I, I, have to, I have to make one statement first. And it's, uh, it's only a slight deviation to something that you said. Now, I know where we're going with the G.I. Joe movie continuity, mm -hmm. wherein Snake Eyes did take a vow of silence. But in the original comics, he, uh, he was quiet because his vocal cords got fucked up right. back in Nam. He right. right. Storm Shadow from a burning helicopter. That's why he took him to his dojo in Japan, and that's why they started training together. Right. But which that's what I remember. My, my problem with this movie is that when they cast Snake Eyes as an Asian man, no, no disrespect to the actor. I'm not disparaging him. I honestly don't know anything about him, but it's, it's not his fault that he's Asian or anything. He's just, if he's a good martial artist, that's a bonus, you know. But Snake Eyes is an outsider. He was, he was an American. He was a white male who came to the dojo in Japan, and nobody really liked him there. Storm Shadow did because he saved his life. And the, the hard and soft master did, and the blind master. They, they were really the only ones. He, other than that, he was a gaijin. Nobody gave a shit about him. Right. So when they made him Asian, I'm just like, you, I don't know. To me, you, like, you lost some of the, the je ne sais quoi, so to speak. That is Snake Eyes. He has to be that outsider. But do we know if he's, is he going to be 50-50, you know, uh, of mixed heritage? And maybe that's know. why he could be considered an outsider? Well, I mean, me, it could be a possibility. To me, I took outsider less literal and more so you're not of this clan. So you're, right. you know, the idea is you, you're you an outsider. You're not part of this clan. So I like that. Me, I think that's more so where they're leaning is that he's just an outsider of that clan. And that is the, the, the pushback that a lot of the, the members give him. What I was reminded of, like, almost immediately was uh, just – as a little side note here, uh, I think we're all Wu Tang fans from back in the day. Yeah. RZA learned kung fu from a genuine, bona fide Shaolin master who was excommunicated from his temple because he was training Americans. I don't right. know if it was white folks, black folks, whomever, but they just they were not having that. He was training round eyes. Get the fuck out. And RZA actually learned from this dude. And this dude was on, not, I don't know if it was Stanley's Superhumans, that show back in the day, or it was one of those other ones where they were showing people uh -huh. with like super extraordinary powers. And this guy had a, a one inch punch, like Bruce Lee's one inch punch. He did it to a, a crash test dummy. And the impact was like a 30 mile an hour car crash. Like, this dude's Ooh. legit. So anybody wow. that wants to disparage RZA for like his role in uh, the, the Man with the Iron Fists, remember that one? D dope movie like it was a great was flick dude it was awesome it was like I, such I an awesome kung fu flick he was also hard master that's yeah, right I, I, I loved that yeah he was hard master blind I master got that figure I, got, I, <laughs> I got him too we're talking we're talking gi joe we're talking rizzer here we go we got the hard yes. master uh uh joe figure yes. right here he man. was the blind master he was blind in the movie yep yep the hard master was, was dead. Oh, he oh, is. Oh, the hard master was he dead. You're right. He was the blind master. You're right. And it was an awesome was role. It was absolutely master. fantastic. It was such a great cameo. And, yeah. But, like, that was what I thought of when, you know, like, okay, maybe he might be just from a different clan. But I, I don't know. Like, when I saw that he was Asian, I thought immediately, like, Storm Shadow should have been, and this is pre-Cobra Kai days, Johnny Lawrence and a bunch of corn-fed white boys from, like, <laughs> surfer land California or something. Right. But, like... I don't know. That, that, that was me being nitpicky. I hope the movie's good. I don't, I don't want it to fail. Right. You know, 
I, I want to see where it can go. I mean, Hasbro right. has such an awesome toy universe. And the idea of having G.I. Joe meet Transformers and then from the Autobots and Decepticons, they make masks. The, the story writes itself. A hundred percent. Uh, Jay, I want to go to you, but I wanted to, I wanted to say some of the names of, of the cast that we got and get your thoughts on, on some of these names uh, and what you can look forward to from their role. So we got Samara Weaving. Uh, she's playing Scarlet. We're getting Scarlet in this movie, which right. I thought was... That's Hugo's I daughter. That. I love her. Yeah, I thought that was cool. really... I thought that was a leap. Like, us getting Scarlet this early, I was like, okay, all right, okay. Uh, okay, uh, you know, I'll let that one go. Obviously, we got Henry Golding uh, as Snake Eyes. We have Ursula as the Baroness. That makes sense, of course. Uh, you assume she has something to do with the assassination of the Hardmaster, we, we assume. Um, okay. Andrew, Andrew Koji as Storm Shadow. Um, Eco as the Hardmaster. Um, Peter Mensa as the Blind Master. Peter, uh, Peter Mensa, if anyone remembers uh, Spartacus, the, the black dude from Spartacus. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, uh -huh. There was another casting that I was really excited for. Hold on. Let me see if I got so obviously you mentioned Dojo's Eco, not too Was that Eco, Eco Weiss from, um, yes. from yep. uh, uh, the Raid? Okay. Yep. Raid Redemption. Okay. He's, he's their hard master. Uh, we got our blind okay. master. Um, we got. Sekiro as Kento, uh, Haruka as Akiko, um, Samuel as Augustine. I don't Stavone. know these people. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know either. There was a, there was another casting because um, what's his name is in here. I thought he was. Hold on, let me check this out just really quickly. I thought there was another big casting from this movie. No, okay. I, I must be thinking about something else. All right, no. they might be keeping a lot of that secret because I'm sure Zartan's going to show up. Yeah, and I'm well, sure I'm, that'll have Cobra to has week. to show yep. up in this movie. Cobra has to be in this movie. Um, so that's I mean, why I would think Scarlet uh, would come out. Like maybe she came to recruit him after everything goes down. Like maybe she's just got a bit part at the end of the flick. You you say that, and that was my that was my immediate thought when they said they were putting Scarlet in the movie. Like, oh, she's going to be like an end credit scene. But when they casted Samara Weaving, I immediately thought I there's going starters. to be there's going to be a connection between Snake Eyes and Scarlet very early on in that movie that they, you know, that after, you know, Snake Eyes saves the day or whatever, I think she'll mention to him that there's a group that, you know, that could use his talents. And then we know that mm -hmm. G.I. Joe. Um, no way you get it's Samara perfect. Weaving. And I'm not saying like Samara Weaving's a huge name. But she's she's um, she's making a name for herself in Hollywood. So I don't think they cast her just to be like an in credit scene. I think she has a significant role in this movie. Um, again, I just thought it was weird to have. Yeah, but then look at Sam Jackson. Nobody nobody figured Sam Jackson would have taken a, a bit part cameo scene at the end of the first Iron Man, and look what that turned into, right? If somebody That's said true. Sam Jackson, oh, I mean, um, but nobody expected him could to get she be something that plays a bigger role? Yeah. No, I mean, no, that's I mean that, that's absolutely that's true. true. I will say though, to be fair, there's not much Samuel Jackson says no to when it comes <laughs> to, when it comes to acting. Um, very yeah. smart yeah. man, very smart man. Um, but no, Jack. So I, I wanted to pass it to you. What are your thoughts on some of these castings, like us getting Baroness, uh, Andrew? Cody um, and, well, you know, Shadow. going back to to the legitimacy, I think somebody like having somebody like Eco Eco Weiss as part of the cast is great because Eco is you know he's an indonesian martial artist so it's still it's still you know hand-to-hand -hand combat but it's another form it's it's something um that i guess you can say shakes up the monotony in a, in a regular fight because if anybody has seen the fight scenes from raid one and raid two you know that's not normal um martial arts moves that you'd seen in, in regular hollywood big budget flicks right. so bringing that flavor um it's it's something that i'm looking forward to uh, yeah. going back to what Pete said, I really would like to see Zartan tied in there, or even to a lesser extent, Firefly. Um, those would be, I, like I guess, the two villains that, that lead in more to that series, uh, more so Zartan than anything else. Because if anybody had read those comics as a kid, you know, Zartan had a huge arc with the way he entered uh, the clan and, and just the sacrifice of the penance he had to do 
before he even got through in the temples. Mm -hmm. um, and then you tie in, you know, the classified figures that were supposed to be uh, tied into the movie release and how they're giving us sporadic figures. And, um, you know, Zartan is one of the, the big names that was going to be released. Uh, and Firefly was another big uh, name that was, I guess, a headline for his wave. So the fact that those came out early in this in this figure line makes me feel like it has something to do with that flick. Yeah, no, I, I, I really do hope that's the case. And I'm looking here. Yeah. The director, his name is Robert Shanky. I can't pronounce his last name that well. But what excites me about him as a director and scares me is he directed Red uh, with Bruce Willis, Morgan Freeman. I love that movie. The right? solid flick. flick. Yeah. yeah. Solid flick, yeah. right? Now, here's what scares me. He also directed R.I.P.D. with Jeff Bridges and Ryan Reynolds. Wow. <laughs> so it's like he's capable of doing really good, but he's also capable of doing really bad. Um, right. But you look at R.I.P.D. and that was heavy CG. That, that Snake was, Eyes yeah. is not heavy CG. It's not. No, it's hopefully not. Extremely heavy CG. Practical. Hopefully not. It, it should be nothing but practical mm -hmm. if we're being completely honest here. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to ask you guys, Jay, Jay, I'll start with you. When the last G.I. Joe movie came out, uh, how big of a fan were you of the um, the figures that they released with that with that movie? Uh, I was huge because that was still the 25th anniversary line uh, style. You know, they had the they had the ab crunch and a lot of figures that came out um, that tied into the pursuit of Cobra were, you know, they didn't tie into the movies, but they were really nice. You had the zombie figures that came out. You had um, Toxo Vipers. You had, you know heavy powered iron grenadier figures um i grew up on that 84 line i love that 84 line but once that 25th anniversary style came out oh, i was all over it i mean i didn't have enough money to pick up uh, uh multiples to build troops out there the movie tie-in figures i really wasn't that into because like even the rock figure he had the gun molded into his hand and i wasn't really something that I was interested in um but the Storm Shadow figures from the that were movie tie-ins prior to that were, you know, they were on the money. Um, I had no interest in getting a Marlon Wayans ripcord figure at you all. Know, um, you know, you making me feel bad, Jay, because I bought that. I, I bought that. <laughs> I bought that immediately, dude. I, I feel bad dude, about the it. The body construction on that, the body construction on that is just so bad. And then you know, yeah, you got uh, you got the basic black paint scheme with a little bit of sheen to give it some shine to it you know there wasn't a lot um to draw your attention to 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 that Actually. figure at all um but then again neither was the movie tie-in to zartan with that blue camo pattern that looked like Not garbage that, that wasn't zartan at all no. yet the zartan that came out with pursuit of cobra after that who looked like the desert warrior and the spike that you could place the eagle on it and you could pull it you could pull the helmet off of the eagle that he had on his spike. Um, that was money in the freaking bank, man. That was an awesome Zartan figure. I do have you know, to so say, it's like, no, I was just gonna say, I do have to say, what upset me about the retaliation figures that they released because mm -hmm. I collect more so the, the 3.75 figures. Um, so what mm -hmm. upset me about that was I bought the four pack that came with um, the Rocks character, Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, and Cobra Commander, right. Do you know mm -hmm. that on the, the figure for The Rock, he has an uh, Arashikage tattoo on his arm? Oh, I didn't know And that. I was like, oh. why? What? Yeah. No. Th th yeah. What? So when I saw that, I was just like, well, this won't be worth anything ever. <laughs> Someone will see this immediately and go, I don't no. want any parts of that. No. Um, no. But one of my favorite figures from that retaliation line was they did an amazing job with Storm Shadow, where it was the removable head. So one okay. was him with with the mask, one without the mask. With the um, the weapon set it was two swords, bow and arrow, um, stuff like that. I thought that was the best figure out of that entire pack. Outside of that Snake Eyes uh, figure, all black, came with the two swords um, and uh -huh. then the gun. I really did like that figure also. But yeah, the, the retaliation... Um, the, first of all, that movie was not good. Um, no. If anything, no. It, it got me really frustrated at the characters 
of Snake Eyes' world. Like when when they were like, "All right, let's come together and stop Cobra together." I was just like, uh, "No, no, it just it it didn't work. It didn't work." <laughs> like it that would be work. like if that would be like if during World War Two, Cap and Red Skull were like, "Hey, there's a threat bigger than both of us. Let's work right." Like, <laughs> right. What? <laughs> like, I wouldn't even know what to say to that. Um, but Pete, I want to go to you. Uh, you put the link in, in the group chat of the Snake Eyes figure. Yes. That, um, that looks so good. So my question to you is, is not really about the figure. And it's more so about what do you want this Snake Eyes from the movie? What costume would you like him to have? Like, do you have one one in mind? I, I do, as a matter of fact. I yeah. want to clear one thing up, though, before yeah. uh, the the fans in the comments destroy me for this. Okay. Uh, I, I just want to make it known that I don't care that they changed Snake Eyes' race from a white guy. I'm not that person. Like, I don't give a shit if he's a white dude. I just want to, like, he could have been a Spanish guy. It could have been a black guy. It could have been freaking anything but Asian. And if you're going to make him Asian, you got to make everybody else different. That's my contention. I don't give a shit what race he is, as long as he's different from everybody else. Right. That was it. Now you people can comment, and if you want to yell at me still, <laughs> go right ahead. But uh, I actually have a preference to the 88 Snake Eyes, because that was the first toy that I had. I didn't start collecting G.I. Joe until 85. The, the one with the two big with Bowie the swords across the chest, chest, and he's got like more yeah. sunglasses yeah. kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, I love, yeah, the, I three, love that yes. visor thing. I do. That, it's a fantastic looking yeah. figure. I never had it until way later on. Uh, a buddy of mine gave him to, sold him to me for $5, as it were. But, he uh, came with a great sword. He did have a nice sword. That yes, was the original one. The, the, the holes in the middle of it? Oh, yeah. great. Yeah. I, I would love to get a hold of that. I don't know how structurally sound that would be, but I'd really know. like to get a hold of one of those. Yeah. My, the bitch of it was he didn't have timber, and I really wanted timber. No. That's yeah, I, I love me some timber. I got to have timber. That, yeah. Like, that's, that's, to me, that's one of the things to where it's like, that's non negotiable. Yeah, Don't I agree. Know. Snake eyes and timber. That's it. Done. It has to be hand in hand. I'm, I would like to see at least both of those black costumes show up. Like, his, you know, his, the, the 88 one was kind of a take on an updated take on his original 82 commando one, which, where it's just the, like yes. that big goggle piece. I don't really need that. Right. I found that one pretty boring all things considered and if you know going back to the creation of gi joe that was just like an afterthought of a figure and we're like hey we're out of money to do paint jobs just right fuck it just get, put it out there and you're supposed to have the lower half as a camel pattern right yeah and just yeah. like everybody went nuts over it but i could do without that one i would really like to see the visor show up and then i'd like to see like an updated costume towards the end like storm shadow i wouldn't mind seeing like his regular one and then give me like that second, like almost Arctic camo, not oh. the not the one with the snow on the stomach. Yeah, thing. No, I know that's no, a nifty no. costume, but I don't think it's movie nifty. You know, it works on a toy. Not I'm also I'm also going to say this because we live in a world, guys, unfortunately, where people don't care about accuracy. Right. I want to make this very clear. I do want to see them with masks more so than not. That to me yep. is a deal breaker. Um, I compare everything to Halo because Master Chief is like, once that's on, that's on. It doesn't come off. And to me, it's part of his character. So if I'm looking at a character calling himself Snake Eyes, and there's never a mask on that face, I'm kind of just like, what, what am I looking at here? You know what I'm mm. saying? But this is the suit, and I know you guys are going to kill me, but I got to be completely honest with you. This is the suit that I want. I, I hope want it's not the Blue here. Mountain... Okay, that's cool. I want this suit okay. here. This is from Resolute. Yeah. The, the yes. movie I was talking guys about. I want. They this. carried that over with the Retribution line, also, didn't they? Yeah. Yes, Where it was did. just the five, the five Joes, and then yep. on the run. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is the one I want. And if I'm being honest, I didn't hate how Storm Shadow looked here. If you guys can see that, I vaguely remember resolute like i i know i watched it i think it i think it debuted on like cartoon network or something it did it did yeah. uh, adults uh, adult swim yeah that was when i watched it i never i never got a hold of it after that so this that's is his when, look um, in resolute that's the one where, where baroness she had that that gray german trench coat kind of yep. uh, a style yeah yep this was the toy line that actually came out for it so you know something here's a little bit of joe trivia for you something i just found out and i don't know 
how true this is, but I read it somewhere that the storyline in GI Joe Resolute was the dream that Duke had while he was in a coma from getting stabbed by Serpentor's oh, snake. Oh, that is awesome. I, would I don't know if that's that. true or not. I, I only would read one that. spot. But I, look, okay, so this is what I compare it to. So when I saw Resolute, right, I saw Resolute, I said, all right, if you're going to do another G.I. Joe live action, it needs to be exactly like that. And a lot of people were like, no, because you got a Hollywood. I said, no, you don't. Everyone and their mother knows who G.I. Joe is. You don't have to Hollywood it up for anybody. It's it's like Batman. People know right. who Batman is. You don't have to Hollywood that up. So Clearly, the I, fandom is there. If exactly. the popularity of classified figures is, is any indication, the fandom's there. The fandom's there, and it's waiting for something good to sink their teeth in. So I compare Resolute the same way I do if you guys ever saw um, – oh, man, um, that Suicide Squad animated movie. Um, okay, yeah. You know what I'm talking him. about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, was yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. I was saying, David Ayer should have just converted that into a live action version of the, the first Suicide Squad movie. It was genius, where the Joker was really like the the, the true big bad of the movie, but mm-hmm. your focus was right. on the Suicide Squad with a sprinkle of Batman in it. Perfect. It would have made a trillion dollars in a box office. So I'm well, looking at this model, and I'm like, if GI Joe wants to do you know, a few different characters that builds into like a big team up movie. It has to be raw and it has, it doesn't have to be as dark as Resolute was, but all this sunny and happiness that you were giving me, that was the cartoons from way back. Keep that there. No, I want to, unfortunately that can't happen with today's mass media market. Everybody's got, uh, everybody's got a hand in the pot. You know what they say about too many chefs in the kitchen. Yeah. Right. And when you have, this media company tying in and they need certain objectives to be um, carried out in their movie before they invest in the brand in the movie because they need, right. They need that money from these outside investors to pay for the movie. Yeah. Plain and simple. And depending on how much movie, how much money you're putting in the flick that shows how much say you're going to have and how many of your things are going to get passed through there. Right. Um, Go ahead. No, go ahead. They, they, they are ultimately in this to sell figures to kids, not us, not collectors. As I'm sorry to say it, right? Sure. They're in this to sell figures to kids. So it being an R flick is not going to happen. I'm not saying it won't happen in the future, but right now in this world, the strongest you're going to get is a PG-13 out of it, I'm right? Okay and that PG-13. Yeah, I, I, I think do. you can PG-13. get away with death as long as it's not like bloody carnage like you know well, like a Jason mean, in my mind shit. that man of steel wasn't rated r and superman was snapping necks in that thing so to me i don't need a rated r i don't mind pg-13 like, like you i don't might need some to... guys getting slashed and shot though like a hundred percent a hundred percent for sure let me, let me let me give this example um batman returns the second tim burton batman flick mm-hmm. okay it was pg-13 it was not r at all Yet McDonald's, who was a huge investor in the movie, and they had the tie-in with those, these Happy Meals, they pulled out of the movie because they felt that was too dark for them. So it doesn't have to be an R for it what? to be dark. So all the money that McDonald's has spent to make those little toys, they just said, screw that. They pulled from it because they didn't like the way that um, Batman Returns looked. And um, I hate to say this, but Batman Returns is just a rehash of Edward Scissorhands um, with the penguin playing the role of Edward Scissorhands, it's the same flick. You just got to add a little bit of Batman spice into it. Yeah, I never heard that comparison. That's I've never had. Yeah, oh, dude, but I can see it. You, you can, you can see. Um, all right, well, all right, Bat, uh, penguins fins. Those are the scissors, right? Okay. There's certain costume designs where. Remember when uh, um, Edward Scissorhands was wearing a shirt and the suspenders over uh, over the shirt. Um, That was the Penguin's uh, outfit. He wore a white shirt with suspenders over it. Um, They were both outsiders that try to fit in to the mainstream. And when they didn't fit into the mainstream, they rebelled. They they went they went uh, and did their own thing. Um, Is it the exact movie? No, but there's certain parallels to it. But anyway, going back to it, McDonald's felt it was too dark for them and they pulled their money out of the flick. So it doesn't need to be an R for companies to say, "Mm, this is not for us well i tell you what we live in a world where warner brothers was like you want to give me a movie 
where Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman team up and Superman dies. Okay. If they, if they, if they can say yes to Superman dying in a movie, I think it's acceptable that we can get uh, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow stabbing guys. And, like, that's all I'm asking for. Like, I don't need to see you cutting heads off, but I need to see a sword go through somebody for sure. A hundred percent. Like, I need, I, I need the accuracy of how lethal these two warriors are. Yeah, um, not going to happen. He-Man had the sword, and the only thing you ever saw him cut through things were the robots. Yep. Well, that was for that was for a cartoon. Here's the thing, though. This no, no, I'm talking about the Dolph Lundgren movie. Oh well, to be fair, this Snake Eyes movie is not is not um, catered for children. Oh god, uh, there are blue ninjas in GI Joe canon now. Yeah, blue ninjas are robot ninjas mm-hmm. from the Arashikage clan. Uh, oh god, do you think we could actually see like, you know, Mars Destro's company making? blue ninjas and bats and we actually will it, get you know things getting slashed apart i hope not is it the teal color scheme what's that or is it like a dark blue is it that teal blue color scheme oh yeah of or is it, it is. the it's dark blue just, it's just bright as shit <laughs> yeah it's that ninja force shit huh yeah that was I the was later down. later issues like after it ended at 155 and then uh idw brought it back this mm-hmm. was uh like i don't even know how much creative control larry hammer had over it but couldn't yeah, have been much. <laughs> couldn't have been much if they were doing that. But I was listening to an interview with with Henry. Uh, I think he was on Jimmy Jimmy Kimmel. No, Jimmy Fallon. Uh, and he was talking about the preparation for the role of, of Snake Eyes. He said it was so grueling. He called his agent and asked if there was a way that they could get out of doing the role. Wow. Um, he said that's how grueling the training was. And like Andrew Koji and the rest of them was like. No, we've done worse. Like <laughs> we've we've done worse. Like you have no idea. But he said he um he appreciated the you know how how accurate they were trying to get for the character, um mm-hmm. and, and how true to the character. They said, here's when this guy when Henry got me excited for this movie. What he said, this is unlike uh any Snake Eyes you've seen in live action. And it's way better than the last time you saw Snake Eyes. The fact that he was able to call out a movie within the same franchise he's working yeah, really. for, I was like, okay, all right, okay, Henry. I- I'm not all the way there till I get that goddamn trailer that they're still holding from us. Uh, which, by the way, that makes me nervous. This movie was supposed to be out last year, and we didn't get a trailer last year. So why are we still waiting to get a trailer? Just drop a trailer. It's no big deal. Just drop a trailer. Did he get a release date yet? Uh, yeah, Anything? October. Yeah, oh, it, it was awesome. supposed to come out October of last year. Mm-hmm. It'll come out October of this year. Uh, you know, granted, they don't push anything back again, but it's completely <laughs> done. Post-production, everything is completely done. Why we don't have a trailer? And what's crazy is if you guys follow me on Twitter, every time that uh, that G.I. Joe movie page uh, for the Snake Eyes movie posts something, I'm the first comment, and it's like, where's the trailer? Uh-huh. Every time they post it, where's the trailer? So I get a guy. Could it be yeah. the toy line that's delaying it? Because I know G.I. Joe Classified was supposed to tie into a six inch line for the Snake Eyes movie. And when that was delayed, uh, they were blaming the movie delay as for the toy line delay. But, you know, it could be six of one, half a dozen of the other. Right. They, and they decided to just push Classified out since most of them were already done. And, you know, that so led into got- the schedule. I got an answer for that. All right. So I'm learning about this because I'm going into my own production stuff. Right. So the classified lines right now in stores are, are known as orphan skews because it's not tied into anything big enough for them to get anything more than the six inches, six inches worth of retail space is nothing. And that's the, that's the space out of box vertically. Right. Listen, can I just say I'm happy with six inches? I don't need more than that. <laughs> I would be too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's gonna there's gonna be a line of figures for the movie itself that mm-hmm. are different than the classified line, right? And these guys were supposed to occupy the four feet or the uh, or the two feet of space that that was supposed to go to. So there's there's already a, a, a skew that's out there um, for the Snake Eyes movie figures, and these were just going to be paired and, and and lined up with that skew. 
they learned from the whole debacle of the second G.I. Joe movie. <clears throat> I don't know if you remember when the second G.I. Joe movie came out, those figures that were tied in were released almost a year prior to the movie coming out because the movie yes. got delayed and stuff like that. So unfortunately, they're learning from that experience, uh, but they're still fucking it all up because nobody knows what's coming out with, with the COVID scene in theaters currently, right? right? And that's why you had the figures come out uh, uh, way back when. Then you had uh, a video game that pretty much no sold. It died within two weeks because it had no other media support. Um, you had the, the two the uh, the two inch line, which is a reproduction of the original three and three four inch line. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like a, a keychain size, but without the keychain hooks. Are those you articulated? Got the little, those little ones. I, think they are i know I the 3.75 ones are yeah those, those are right right I've got and there's few. like a, a resurgence of the classics line of those as well right. that's coming out right, right. Now. so that's 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 this over here right so right. that's that's uh, hey, is that a little wave. closer and i think that's the one i i just got from amazon yes no right? so that's that mine's a little different okay um so that's him and here he is here he is still in the packaging yeah, that's, that's the, the new one. Yes, yes. Okay? But this is just a reissue of a two-pack that came out years ago. Well, wait, it was a Jay. Storm Shadow two-pack. Jay, quick question. The one yeah. I have looks exactly like that, but it comes with interchangeable heads. This is what was at Walmart. These were the Walmart exclusives. Uh-huh. Um, Hold on, so I don't know about the interchangeable more. heads. So that's that. And then... Um, you know, it, it, trying to find them is pretty, pretty hard, right? Oh God, so, it's proven so. Im- it's improved. It's like just as bad as it sucks in mind. general, but man, so here's, here's the roadblock still in the package. That's a cool figure, right? And then you got. Uh, okay. Hold on, let me show you. I, I see the one you're talking about, but this is the one that uh, that I got that I bought. This one here. Oh no, dude, oh, that's an old. That. That's an old figure, bro. Oh, okay. That yeah, I, I like that. I like that it came with the uh, the interchangeable heads. Yeah. No. Oh, no that's yeah. Cool. That's from that's from right before the GI Joes uh, uh, went dormant for a little while. You know, so there are differences but because one, this is the one you're talking this, about is right here. Yeah. Yeah. The card is the card is a hell of a lot different. The blister runs a hell of a lot higher on that than the one that you were looking at. Wow, it's not that expensive here. No, I think they're brand new. I think that just came out. Yeah. I mean, retail at the store, they're 12 bucks. Wow. If you can pick them up at Walmart. What Walmart are you going to, man? Like, <laughs> bro, are you out in Long Island? <laughs> bro, I do the hunt in Long Island, bro. I've driven, because uh, from Brooklyn, I've hit uh, pretty much every Walmart up until exit like, 71 on the LIE. Mm, wow. You're going and out And trying there. to find them has been hard dude. Yo, the, the target exclusives about, are ridiculous right oh, now you're never gonna get them you're never I, gonna get them first of all they stopped updating the app from what i heard yeah. and then yeah. they stopped using the third party uh like inventory updaters and i don't remember the names of them because i never really yes. knew about them until they stopped using them but i've been i was on the app actually right. earlier too. at dinner look i'm still looking for the viper still looking for firefly and mm. i found the viper in stock in the the mall, the Gateway Mall, all the way on the other ass end of Brooklyn, and I'm just no, looking no, at the no, no, snow no. outside. That's the one I live next to. You. Oh yeah, yeah. Son of a well, Dude, there might be a here. viper in stock there. There might be. I'm looking outside at hey, my you know, my cars just walled in with snow. I'm like, <laughs> like, the one day I can't get out to get, I would have gone right there. I'd have been calling you guys from the road, like I'm trying to get some Joes right now. Bro, I, I, I wanna I, ask- I, that's my first stop. That's my first stop, and and go bright and early nothing. tomorrow. There might be a viper there. I don't know. It just it just went in then stock you, today. We ain't dude, live, bro, are we? There's people on their way the guys, there right now. <laughs> you got the guys who were doing the early release stuff, you know, prior prior yeah. to Target's release date, right? Mm-hmm. They get it. They go to the to the checkout counter, the self checkout counter, and they get a, a Marvel Legends figure. Scan that Marvel Legends figure twice. And put the fucking the, the the early release Joes in there and get out with them. Right. 
because if you try to ring that up at a regular checkout, they're not going to. It doesn't work, password. right? right. I, I want to ask you this. I want to ask you this, Jay, and it's the same question for you too, Pete. When Toys R Us closed, how bad yeah. did that affect the toy game? Because only reason I ask that is, when, as soon as Toys R Us closed, like a month after, right? Like when mm-hmm. Toys R Us was open, you'd go on Amazon. The prices are comparable. Like Toys R Us would sell it for like, you know, what, $12, 13 mm-hmm. You go on Amazon now, Amazon is like, oh, you want this figure that was like $13 yesterday? It's $166 now. And it's like, where are you shipping this from? Like, why is it so expensive? Well, we just saw it. Like you pulled that, that Snake Eyes figure up that was 25 Jay said it was like 13 bucks in the store. Right, exactly. So how, how detrimental was Toys R Us closing to the toy industry? Um, that, I, in my opinion, not much because at uh, those last two years, they were not stocking the way they should have been stocking, I, right? The, 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 the action figure lines that we were um, collecting at that time was Marvel Legends. They hadn't tied it. Hasbro hadn't figured out how to do the movie skews, right? So each skew that they had up there on the shelves was tied into whatever wave. Um, to get them to really purchase, you had to tie in to the movie skews, and then you you put in the the fan favorite figures that we want to get to in there, right? Um, the mini Marvel Legends, the three quarter, the the four inch Marvel figures, they were pretty much dying out already. They were on the black card figures, um, and it was it was I think maybe the second wave of black card um, Marvel figures, and they were just peg warmers up there. Um, the figures that people wanted really weren't getting restocked. Star Wars was the only thing that was constantly moving because you had the movies coming out. Yeah. Um, even even the Rogue One stuff. I remember seeing how uh, Toys R Us had big end caps with the ad acts that were for Rogue One that they had the different bronze coloring and stuff like that. And you, you popped remember, the back out. Do you remember the black series that they had of, uh, it was like Han, Luke, and I think it was like C-3PO and like a big old AT-AT. And then another one that was like uh, Slave Leia with Jabba. Um, they were coming out with like the huge box sets of like the 3.75 figures but it, they were i remember yeah yeah i was like yeah star wars, they, they even like, star wars knew what they were doing yeah and and they were just starting to get into the collector's market so you were starting to see more of the neca figures in there mm-hmm. you um funko was coming into its own and going outside of uh the pops that's where you had the batman 66 funko figure line you were able to find that at toys r us but by that time you know the the coffins were already uh, uh, in the uh, in the ground for Toys R Us, and there was no way they were coming out of it at that time. Yeah, I just felt like Toys, and I'm going to go to UP. I just felt like Toys R Us refused to adapt. Like they really felt as though there is no one else that's doing what we're doing, so we don't really need to change much. And it was Unfortunately, like, it, that's true. Yeah, it, it, that's still true. Yeah, like, there are no real but, toy stores, and that that's the the tragedy of Toys R Us closing is like kids can't just waltz into a toy store and just Hunt. go yeah. gaga like like we used to right you know and i, I have right. to say like you know jay's right overall it didn't really uh detriment the toy company that the toy industry that much because mad other retailers have picked up whether it's walmart target what, what their own idiosyncrasies aside other stores have picked best up buy. I saw toy, best buy i was just about to say i seen toys in best buy yes. or comic see that shop. shit best or, or your local comic, comic two, shops two aisles to figures yeah mad online yeah. stuff hasbro pulse is killing it like i love that shit Dude. super seven yeah. they're great yeah. the problem is when hasbro and I, I i don't know what possessed them to continue doing this with the uh the, the exclusive stuff that's what you have to stop doing because jay's right with with so little space allotted for toys, whether there's a movie tie-in or not, you're still limited to like three aisles of, right. let's say, action figures before you go into girls' toys. And I don't, I'm sorry if that's not politically correct anymore, but you go into the, like, the dolls and stuff and, mm-hmm. and you know, little, little baby things and whatnot. And then you get bicycles and shit. Like you have three aisles tops of action figures. Now you have to stock that and keep it stocked. And they don't do that. There's... Jay's right. There's peg warmers of the same ass figure, and you've seen that all the way, all the way back to the '80s when you looked up and there was nine thousand crystal balls on the, the right. thing. Like nobody wants this right. guy. Nobody cares. <laughs> Chris, what are you talking about? Crystal ball was amazing as a figure. I love Chris. He's the seventh son of a seventh son, bro. 
He was <laughs> also designed by Stephen King. I didn't know that until way I later. Didn't know that, dude. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's oh, like his, well, the, the psychoticness of that Tucker figure Rhode was Island not connection. revealed. Yeah, that that shit was crazy. I heard about dude, that. You know, you got so many Joe figures that we didn't we didn't know they were tied into Nothing. to other celebrities. Outback, you know, was taken off of uh, Chuck Norris in Mission Impossible. You had um, you had Bazooka, who was uh, uh, a New England Patriots quarterback. You had um, you had Law and Order uh, Law, excuse me, who was one of the designers from Hasbro. I never you knew had, that. Yeah, dude. Oh wow. Um, Big Boa was supposed to be the antithesis of the Rocky figure, right? right? That, that and then never the got Rocky released. got canceled, right? Yes. Um, you know, so dude, oh my god, there was there was a website um that that had a rundown of the likenesses of the figures but i don't remember reading the crystal ball connection I, I, king. I have a That's vague great. recollection of reading that that was created by stephen king and if i'm wrong the, i'm sure the comment section will destroy me but i'm they fairly always, certain that that was stephen king but yeah, yeah man like my hunt for the classified figures has been basically online and that's it you know like yeah I yeah. never found that Cobra Trooper, and it's such a dope figure, but I refuse to pay $150. Same with Beachhead. Beachhead was like my guy, besides Flint and Shipwreck uh-huh. back in the day. And Shipwreck was a great guy. Yeah. Love Shipwreck. Yeah, but so I, I, will say, <laughs> I will say to the point you were making, it does suck that kids today, I don't even think kids today would be interested in it, but the idea that they don't have the opportunity to just go into a store that's just catered to toys. That's You're it. right. Now but, it's it's the parents, like oh, big dummies like us, who are taking right. the kids. Like, yeah, go ahead, go to the video game section. Walk around. And you know, you know, it's crazy. I, I said to my um my little brother the other day, I was like, um, yeah, I remember back when I was young, you know, um, dad taking me to KB Toys, and he looked oh, at yeah. me like I had seven heads. It's like if you tell a kid today, hey, do you remember EB Games? EB what? It's like, yeah, there were other things besides what you know today. Netflix um, but the used bigger to come in the mail. <laughs> yeah, like we see, when we talk about it, we seem like we're so old. It's like, it's not that long ago, but it really was. Okay, uh, Grandpa, KB take Toys, your meds. KB yeah. Toys was so long ago, and it got swallowed yep. by Toys R Us. Like, I remember my parents never took me to Toys R Us. It was only KB Toys. Um, so that's all I knew. And then my dad was a manager for an EB game. So the day he told me, oh, it's GameStop now. I'm like, what the hell is a GameStop? And he's like, it's the future. (laughs) I was like, (laughs) okay. Um, But yeah, you know, to me, you know, I have to now go to different comic book shops to look at their, their figures and stuff. And most of them are the, the, I don't want to say used because that's, you know, that's not necessarily the case, but you know, when they have them in the small little Ziploc bags. Right, right, right. um, (laughs) And it's like, no, there's there's no feeling like going into Toys R Us, it being in the box. You know, you have to dig through a few because, you know, there's some kid that was trying to steal it. So the box is half open. Yep. Um, so you got to yep. look for the one behind it. Um, but yeah, that box, that box feeling is great. But that's why Amazon is doing good in, in, in the toy industry, because it's the idea that you can just go on there and there's like billions. Like you walk into Walmart, they only have what they have on the shelf. And what they tell you they don't have in the back. I've worked at a, a Walmart before. You have it in the back, lazy asses. Hit, hit, uh, here's $50. <laughs> go get it. <laughs> right, yeah. Go get my toy yeah. from back there. The uh, bitch of it is, I, and I guarantee you, because if I could think of it, somebody else can, because I'm not the smartest human being on earth. I, some, they're just bringing shit to customer service, calling their friends and be like, yo, these things go for $150 on eBay. Come yes. buy them. I got them on hold for you. Yes. Uh, and yes. I'm not saying that it happens. I'm just it saying happens. it probably happens. <laughs> of course it, that happens. It almost a thousand percent happens. Hell yeah. Um, when, when I was a manager at GameStop, I had friends call me, yo, like, you know, I, I know I know this Call of Duty is like flying off the shelf. Like, can you hide one? And we could, like, legally, we could, like, put one aside for them. So I'm like, of course people are doing it in, yeah. in Walmarts and Targets for, for exclusive toys. Especially if they're only getting, like, uh, I think when, when Classified first started, and the uh, the Red Ninja was like the, the top one to get. And there was like one in every case of other figures because they figured nobody gave a rat's ass about Red Ninjas. Meanwhile, that's the one that people want to buy like four and five of to have yeah. like a little army worth. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Bro, I'm a big Red Ninja fan. 
I love oh, Red Ninja. I, I need some Red Ninja. I got about I got about twenty of the Red nice. Ninjas. Nice. I'm gonna you tell know? you right now. I want that, not robot. Uh, Hell yes. <laughs> not robot people. You know? Bro, I know a few I'll, people I'll that were supplementing. Bro, okay. I'm, I'm a big, oh, I'm wow. a big uh, on troop build, uh, on troop building. I love yes. to troop build. I love that. You know, I love it's that. all about the David and Goliath thing, right? Mm -hmm. And if you could troop build, you could play off of that David and Goliath. Story. That's why I wanted like five Vipers until I realized yeah. that I, that was not going to happen. No, that's a hundred bucks. That's a hundred. That's a hundred dollars per. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Man, I did want to ask you guys this because, uh, because I think it was Toys R Us exclusives, uh, like a maybe a year or two before they closed. Were you guys ever interested in any of the um, the vehicles that they were coming out with for uh, at Toys R Us? Like they came with the jet, one came with like a boat and, and, and stuff like that. Were you guys interested in any of those figures? Yeah, because they were ashes. Yeah, right. you know, I, could, I had no room. Big. <laughs> right. They were re-releases. You could pick up the Tomahawk. Yeah. You could pick up the Skyhawk. You had the two packs with the, the Cobra Hiss and the G.I. Joe Snowmobile together. Cobra Hiss. Yeah, man. And now people are killing for the Cobra Hiss. My goal you know? at some point when I get the basement cleared out of all the nonsense, like I've, I've been eBaying like a crazy person. Mm -hmm. I want to get like fishing line and just hang like sky strikers and ravens from the, from the ceiling <laughs> yeah. and shit, like an aerial battle. That's yeah. all I asked for. What was oh, that? Man. What was that? Because I don't know too many people that remember this. And I know the two of you would. What was that <laughs> animated GI Joe movie that came out where Cobra was trying to splice human blood with like animals? Oh God. I can't remember. And like snake eyes had two apprentices. Um, God, I that can't had to be the DIC second iteration. Probably. It was after Operation Dragonfire, which was the uh, the continuation after the GI Joe the movie when Snake mm -hmm. Eyes be when Snake when uh, when Cobra Commander became a snake, and then his like loyal followers turned him back into like a subhuman kind of half snake. Thing. Right, and then he turned yeah. Serpentor into a little scorpion, dropped his ass in the desert. I found it. No, I found it. Okay. It was Valor versus Venom. Valor versus Venom. Okay. Valor versus oh. Venom. Oh, well, Venom. that's that. That's different. All right. So the apprentice was Kamakura. Yes. Kamakura right was um, a kid who had written Snake Eyes a letter in the very last Marvel G.I. Joe comic book. So when he went to Devil's Due, everybody was trying to figure out who Kamakura was. And then when they were like, oh my God, it tied into that letter from that fan of Snake Eyes from way back when, it just, it, it blew up. Because for a while, everybody thought it was Billy. Remember? Right, right, right. Overcommanded. And that's the one figure that we never got, ever. Was Billy. Yeah. Was Billy. Cobra so I think they made him in the 25th anniversary line, if I'm not mistaken. Really? I think so. I think there was a Billy figure. If only there were devices that we could find this information. Yeah, I'm out. thinking <laughs> <now>. <laughs> <laughs> Because all I remember seeing were customs of Billy. I would have jumped on Billy. Yeah, that that was a. I mean, yeah, that all tied in with the whole Fred Wait, the, the Seventh Cobra the Commander. Son of Cobra Commander. Hmm? Son of Cobra, son Commander, of Cobra Commander. Commander. Yes. Yeah, here. I think this is it. He lost a leg and he lost an eye. There it is. Wait, that's a custom though. Is that a custom? That's a cust is that a, that's custom? a custom job? Yeah. It's a custom. That's a custom job. Oh shit! I thought that was real. That was yeah. a good custom job. <laughs> Had me. You sure completely... that's not just a Joe a Joe Club member one? Because you don't want really Joe wonky Club ones. One. That could be because, dude, GI Joe Club at the end was coming out with some nice figures. Yeah, they were. The Battle Force two thousand line, the Air Raiders line. There's only one way to find this out, and that's to hit eBay. And let's just see <laughs> if it's on oh, eBay. No, that right. means it was mass produced. It was a it was a Joe Club figure FSS. Ah, there we go. FSS? Oh, that's it's probably stupid expensive now. Yeah, at this point for sure, for sure. That's probably like the the Transformer GI Joe figures. Oh man, I wanted that Jetfire Sky Striker. Like I'll oh, no, punt no, the no, for I'm that. Talking about, remember when Hot Rod Springer Ultra Magnus and RC became humans? No. No. In the GI Joe cartoon. 
what is this? No. No, and it was in a Transformer cartoon. Excuse me. In a Transformer cartoon, those four Transformers became human. And at the end of the episode, you found out it was Cobra Commander. That was the one with Old Snake. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. man. So they made those four figures. Oh, Hot wow. Rod and RC made it into production in the Collector's Club. Springer and Ultra Magnus, um, only prototypes of those came out. I never knew Wait, they made those figures. Wasn't Hot Rod the original name before they made him uh, Bumblebee now? No, no. Hot Rod was a, a different character. Bumblebee yeah. was one of the only ones to survive right. the, uh, the Then Decepticon it became Goldbug. Goldbug, yeah. I, yeah. I thought it was a name before it was Bumblebee. No. No, it was, Bumblebee it was, was first, then he became Goldbug. Hot Rod was a uh, Totally separate character, and he became Rodimus Prime. Switch back to Hot Rod every now and right. then. Okay, I got you. Maybe maybe you're confusing Bumblebee with the style because Bumblebee uh, in red was Cliff Jumper, Cliff and Jumper, then there was a right. blue Bumblebee, yeah. but they never they never put him in the cartoon. I don't remember what his name was. I didn't he even was, know there was he, a blue one. Yeah, he's that blue I, Bumblebee is super limited. I will say this: I know they'll never do it. They'll never do it. So you guys don't even have to tell me. I know they won't, but. I've been dying. Like, I was so excited when Michael Bay's Transformers franchise was failing. Mm -hmm. I was just like, all right, great. We've had six movies of this. People got their fill. We can move on. I want Beast Wars, man. I want some Beast uh, Wars. I, I want it desperately. I want those first five minutes of the Bumblebee movie to be a, the next Transformers movie. 100%. 100%. Yeah. However... Yeah. Juwan, you're going to get Beast Wars. Uh, have you been following the Transformers uh, Earthrise series on Netflix? No. Is it going into Beast Wars? Third season. Third yep. season's Beast Wars. It is. Oh, yep. yes. Oh, my God. I love you're welcome. Beast Wars so much. See, this I never got into it, but it, it does me good to oh. see your joy over this. Man, yeah. when I tell you Beast Wars was, was everything to me. Oh, man, you're going to make me cry. Oh, that's the greatest news Not ever. for nothing. The, the Transformers Netflix shit is pretty damn oh good. Oh, my God. Hello? I, I started it. I just didn't get a chance to kind of, like, bunker down. Yeah, so sit, sit down and watch it. We I just got uh, season two. First yep. one was Siege of Cybertron. This was Earthrise. Right. And I don't yep. remember. I think it's War for Cybertron is the full trilogy name or something. Okay. Figures but are dope, too. They're smaller was, scale, but they're super detailed. I tell people all the time, when you do a Transformers movie, I get it. You put humans in it the same way you have to put humans in like a Godzilla or a King Kong movie. Right, right. I get it. Problem is, they can't be the focus. It has to be the, like, the last Godzilla movie that just came out was a perfect example of how you do a monster movie. The focus was all Godzilla yep. that sprinkled in a, sub, uh, a subplot of humans. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. So this next Transformers movie and the advantage that Transformers has that Godzilla or King Kong doesn't, they talk. So yeah. just give me a movie <laughs> of just Transformers. I don't need humans. The humans is there for the dialogue. But if the, the humans Garth only show up on this shit for like maybe two episodes at best, like, oh, oh man, there's giant robots running around. Wait. It's mostly robots. I have to ask you this, because when I tell you, when I saw the trailer for the Netflix Transformers series, right? Like before it came out, did this upset you guys like it did me? How the fuck are they transforming into cars and planes if they've <laughs> never been to Earth? <laughs> like, where did that come from? Shouldn't they just be their form all the time? And that that's actually like the the original cartoon had them as much more you know, alien looking ships and, and right. yeah. vehicles and things until they got to earth and Teletran one was like, right. Uh, heal, fix, repair. And Oh, <laughs> let's make them look like this shit instead. Right. Yeah. But to me, the whole purpose was transformers, robots in disguise, but you're on your planet. Yeah. Who are you disguised? Like, who <laughs> sees you as a car and goes, oh, that's not Dave. Like, That's, that's just not clearly not. a regular car. What's a like, car? <laughs> I don't know what a regular car is. That's Dave. Like, go get Dave. Like, 
<laughs> what? That made no sense. And I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, this is so infuriating. <laughs> like, There's only one what? Lamborghini Countach on an alien world. Right. I'm like, <laughs> you turn into a large fire truck and someone won't go, yeah, no, that's Optimus. Like, you're not in disguise. Like, I know that's you. Like, no one else is a fire truck around here. So I thought that was completely stupid. But I do like Hasbro's uh, bigger plan that they talked about uh, a few years ago when they were talking about the Men in Black and, and uh, 21 Jump Street crossover, that they wanted to do a Transformers G.I. Joe crossover. It uh, should happen that if was, it's done that, right. No, but it, that's, that's dead in the water, that's, dude. Go ahead. What were you saying, Jay? That's dead in the water. That was a tie into Paramount. And that's why at San Diego Comic-Con, they had that big pack that it was supposed to be the, the kickoff to that. So you had uh, the jet fire, you had uh, two Joes in there, you had Rom, which was never a Marvel property, that was always Hasbro. Um, you had um, the action man, uh, who was the, the English version of mm -hmm. G.I. Joe, because you know, they're not American in, in, in the UK. Mm -hmm. And then you had uh, the visionaries. That was a huge San Diego collector's pack. And that was supposed to kick in the tie into the comics and then the release of the movies. But the G.I. Joe two flicks did so shitty, right. all of that stuff got scrapped. And it was around the time where Transformers movies were on the way, drastically declining. Right. Um, I don't think they were ever good. I'm sorry. That's me. You know what? You know what, Jay? I'm not the kind of guy that will argue that, but I will tell you those first two were first two, maybe three, but definitely the first two were solid. They let me know that they were on the right track. And then right around that third movie, they were just like, ah. I'm with you. Like, I enjoyed them as far as, like, holy shit, I'm watching a Transformers movie in the theater. Yeah. And then, like, after a while, I'm like, Stop Yeah, it. The, the problem Michael Bay okay. had was the more Transformers movies he made was, like, when they did more than three Saw movies to where it was okay. just, like. There was so much slow-mo. <laughs> like, like, in the last. I, I watched the last night, and it was, like, giving my fucking eyes AIDS. Like, I'm yeah. just. I like it was a two couldn't. hour, 40 minute movie that could have easily been an hour and 45 minutes instead, but everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, but hey, let, let me say this. I will say, I think it was the second one. It was the second one. That to me is very high on my all time list. The scene where uh, they're ganging up on Optimus in the woods and they mm -hmm. actually kill him there. Uh -huh. That is such a beautiful, and I don't give Michael Bay much credit when it comes to Ninja Turtles or what he did with Transformers, but that scene right there visually was shot perfectly. Yes, that was um, a good scene. Now, I do think the plot really got worse as that movie continued, mm -hmm. um, and the fact that Optimus was like, oh, hey, I can take parts off another Transformer and put it on me, and then the third movie, it was like, hey, can you do that again? No. No. What the fuck? What? Why? We, I don't, I, can't do which it. was the one where Megatron was the the tractor trailer, but that really was, just uh, cubes that four. can form anything. Uh, was I, I was like, "Come on, man! This is it." Just uh, that was the one when like they introduced that other character, Lockdown, and we're like, "Who the fuck yes, is Lockdown?" Right, exactly. We thought he was gonna. Be, they, we saw the cannon. I'm like, "Oh shit! It's Galvatron! It wasn't Galvatron! Why nope. wasn't it Galvatron?" Because Michael Bay isn't a true fan. That, that's why. Right. Uh, but, Jay, I want to ask you, what what specifically, like, let's let's just stick to the first movie, right? Okay. That universally, most people that are familiar with Transformers or aren't usually gravitate towards just that movie. But what about that movie in its whole where you just not vibing with? I couldn't stand the transforming process. It didn't work for me. I hate that whole deuce ex machina thing where they can just become anything. You know, they, they, the hand is not just the hand, it's the cannon, it's the chain, it's the rocket launcher. Um, it never runs out of missiles. Um, I, I just, it didn't, it just didn't. And then they killed Jazz. I'm sorry. Jazz was my favorite of all the Transformers. All right, he was Scatman Carruthers in the cartoon, and every kid loves Scatman Carruthers. Um, you don't kill Jazz. You don't kill Jazz. Wait, Jay, I want to ask you this, because I, I, I know you didn't like him, and, and I'm I spiritually, I am there with you and, and not liking what Michael Bay did with that franchise. Did it bother you that her movie, Decepticons, were growing in numbers, 
but Autobots were like the same five to eight. And it was just like, mm. how is it more Decepticons are coming down, but Autobots are like, nah, it's not my fight. I'm going to stay here. Like, no. why is it we never got more Autobots? Because you need that David and Goliath story. You really do. You give me three more Autobots and like <laughs> well, they did. Decepticons. Like. They did. They gave you the they gave you the guy from um uh the last samurai who became okay. the Corvette, but the fiberglass trench coat that he had was always yeah. constantly flowing. I, I didn't understand that. That was well, um, I thought he, the samurai guy was the, the helicopter that was like whirl or something. Okay, so oh, then the other blade, one, the one that was supposed blade, to be they gave you Hot Rod. Hot Rod was the, the red, whatever the hell it was, Ferrari or some shit. Who was the one that had the blue trench coat? Oh, that, that was, was the... voiced by, I think, John Goodman. Uh, he had, no, like, no, John Goodman young... had John Goodman had Hound. Why couldn't they get Hound? I, right. uh, yeah. You, you know, guys I, like I the dinos? The coat was the... No, the, the Dinobots like they made fucking Grimlock like a dragon or something. They was like a giant five headed dragon. It's like was it Dungeons and Dragons? Him. See him at now? Yeah. No. All right. So let me let me be honest with you guys because I, I I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Here was my biggest issue with 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 Michael Bay. The trailers were beautifully shot. I mean, just beautifully constructed. And I remember after that third movie, I said he will not fool me again. That fourth Transformers trailer dropped, and I said, fuck, I'm going to spend money to go see this shit in theaters. And I remember 15 to 25 minutes into that movie, I said, god damn it, he's done it again. He's given me a (laughs) shitty movie that a trailer attracted me to. But Michael Bay is one of those guys. I compare Michael Bay and what he did with Transformers. I know people are going to kill me. Just hear me out. I compare it to what Christopher Nolan did with Batman. They were trying to go way too realistic into characters that should never be thought that hard into. It's a okay. guy that dresses up as a bat. He's a mythical figure. I don't need what would a real guy that dresses up as a bat be like. That's not what I read comics for is realism. I read them for the fantasy of it. And it seems as though Michael Bay was just like, no, realistically, if there were Transformers, it would only be on Earth. There wouldn't be like a, a planet for them to go to. And it's like, why, Michael? Why wouldn't your first movie be them on their planet then the, the huge war erupts that lands them down to Earth. And then the second movie could be interacting with humans. But at least we had that full-on war movie uh, of them in, in, in Cybertron. But to him, nope, humans on Earth only, nothing up there, none of that. All right. So my brain cells are kicking in, and mm-hmm. I'm remembering the other stuff that I didn't like. Um, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the overacting of Torturo as the secret agent. Uh, um, sorry, uh, I, I, I love him. No, oh, <laughs> I do love God, him. I do love him no. <laughs> oh no, he didn't do it for me. Um, and then you know, but I look at that like it's supposed to be silly because that's it's what him. it seemed like. That's right. that's the only reason I accept so, it. Okay. I agree, it's overacting. So if it was supposed to be silly, why not keep Bumblebee as the fucking punch buggy? We already saw it worked in a whole other movie. You because know, because Chevy or, was like here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely yeah. right. That brand absolutely funny right. big yes. time. For sure. Yes. For yes. sure. And, and if you guys uh, if you guys watch any of the uh, Michael Bay like talking about those movies, he was saying how huh. some of those car companies were not okay with him blowing up some of those cars. <laughs> <laughs> he was That's just funny. Like, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, he was just like, like one of the cars he wasn't supposed to blow up. And I think it was like an accident or some shit. And Michael Bay was just like, Oh my God, (laughs) they will not be happy about that. Um, But yeah, no, I I just think when you're doing a Transformers franchise, it needs to be done by somebody who is a diehard fan of it, um, who will give it the treatment that it deserves. Whoever did Bumblebee. I don't know the guy, but Jay, you're right. uh, First five, 10 minutes of Bumblebee was like out of this world. Like this. Yeah, I think his name is Travis Knight, I think. His first okay. name is definitely Travis, but he, he's the one who did that. You know what's crazy? That movie was great until he landed on Earth. Once the Earth story <laughs> kicked in, I, I mentally checked out. I said, I have no more interest in this. No more. Yes. To me, I'm like, once you see that war in, ensuing, you're kind of just like, man, I just want a movie of this. <laughs> like, yes. I, I've seen six yes. movies of them interacting on Earth. I, I don't really need more of that. I've no. got my fill. 
I kind of want to see you interact with more of your own on your on your planet. Well, um, I was yeah, writing I about project. Transformers. Like I, arguably the best part of Transformers are the Combiners. Like everybody yes. loves the Combiners. Yeah. Devastator, yes. Superior, Menasaur, Bruticus, yes. and then like Predaking. We're, we're get, yeah. Predaking was bar none, like just a, a, an amazing yeah. character, yeah. but he didn't show up until uh, yeah. after the movie, like the, right. as far right. as like the toy Him, line and Computron, stuff. Like, right. Um, um, the, the the protecto bots were that's right, the, right. The first the aid, ambulances uh, and shit. I can't remember right. his name. Right. But like right. when we were gonna get Devastator. For part two, and we're like, oh, awesome. And then I'm in the theater, like, why does it have a nutsack? What <laughs> is this nonsense? What is happening I here? Know. I know, I know, yeah. I know. That wasn't Plus, we got him in the first one. What was he, the tank? He was devastated, was a tank in the first one? No. No. The no. name Devastator was used in the first place. Was he really? Well, I don't yep. remember that. I must have blocked that out. Yep. That's a good chance we all blocked that out. That, yeah. that, that's for sure. That is yeah. for sure. Yeah, but I mean, look, it, it to me, Michael Bass seems like the guy that should be doing um, uh, his own creations rather than taking something that already exists. Okay. Uh, yeah. Seeing how tall he made the fucking Ninja Turtles was just like, what cartoon did he ever watch? Like, why are they so big? That was my biggest gripe with that movie. Is was, why are they so big? <laughs> like you. Why are they the size of a building? Like, how are they sneaking around anywhere? <laughs> like, <laughs> they were they were in Madison Square Garden as if someone couldn't look up and see these building-sized turtles up there eating pizza. And it's just like, why? Like, why? What you know, is- I'm like, I'm used to the Ninja Turtles that could strap on a trench coat and go to a crime scene. Like, hey, what's going on here? And like the cop being totally oblivious, like, Oh, someone died here. <laughs> it's like not noticing a, a, a turtle. <laughs> You're clearly not an amphibian in a trench coat. Right. You're right. Like, uh, clearly, I mean, yeah, but that to me was just like, it, it was honestly, it was disrespectful and offensive. Uh, what they did with those Ninja Turtle movies. And then what they did with Casey Jones, it was just. There was no Casey Jones. There, there was no Casey no. Jones. You're absolutely right. You're the, absolutely only guy, right. the only guy who played Casey Jones fought Raphael in Central Park. That was it. Right. I'll give you that. No, that's for sure. Um, last thing I want to get to, guys, before I get us about it here, uh, I don't want us running too long. Um, this goes to WandaVision, right? And, and Jay, I want to start with you. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth Olsen, in an interview uh, recently, or today maybe, I think it was, said that the there is a big reveal in this season of WandaVision that mm-hmm. will rival the big reveal that we got in Mandalorian season two. Um, I think she is smoking the highest form of crack. Um, <laughs> there is nothing that can top that. I cried 3 a.m. in the morning watching uh, how the Mandalorian season two ended. Like, I, I remember when, uh, what you both have seen all of season two of Mandalorian, right? Yes. Okay, yes. perfect. So when Grogu was on that, on that rock and he was reaching out to Jedi, right? I was thinking Ezra is probably who he's reaching out to. Um, the the guy from that newest Star Wars game um, that Cameron Monaghan was playing. There was like other Jedi. I, I remember saying on the podcast, there's no way in hell they're bringing in Luke. They're just not, there's no way they're going to do it. There's just no way they're going to do it. When I saw that one plane fly through, I said, oh, no, they didn't. And then you see him ignite the lightsaber and just demolish those great scene. Beautiful. Now, my question to you is, Jay, what reveal could you possibly think of that is big enough to top how boss Luke Skywalker showing up was for the Mandalorian season two? (sighs) Dude, I I got like, this is the first time I'm hearing it. So the the brain is, is running right now. Could it be Magneto? Could it be Mephisto? Could it be you bring it back uh, um, Quicksilver? Um, I mean, could it be Wonder Man because he's the tie-in to all of this? Uh, I, I don't I don't I don't know, dude. You know, I mean, this story is taken from so many different elements. Yes, you're like, <laughs> oh, you know, and and people are forgetting. You know, Vision was a villain um, at one point when he tried to take over the world, you know, and 
it was after that series that Monica Rambeau um, showed up as Captain Marvel and she became leader of the Avengers um, after that storyline. You got, you know, Wanda, when she went bananas in West Coast Avengers, trying to uh, find a vision. And that's when the vision came back with a white costume. You know, he was deconstructed. Um, and it's weird because I, I'm like, I started to lean towards that when he's talking to Herb and Herb started cutting through the concrete. Why was Herb cutting through the concrete, right? Acting like nothing was going on. Was he talking to the AI, uh, which would, could have been in a computer in a, in a room that we're not seeing while he's working on the, the actual vision body? I, I don't know, you know, um, how can it rival? Uh, like, all right, so for example, Jay, someone, like someone, as soon as I posted saying like, it's impossible, nothing can top Luke Skywalker, immediately someone was like, well, what if, we'll, what if Hugh Jackman as Wolverine shows up? That's not, that's, it wouldn't mm. rival that. It wouldn't mm. rival. All right, so being so the only rival, the only rival for that would be uh, because he was recently signed again Chris Evans is Captain America um, as, a, as a young man, not as the old man, because they're in Jersey. And where was he when he was going through camp training? He was in Jersey, right? Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Funny, as just a, like a little side note. So I'm watching the news the other day in ABC, that's Disney, right? Mm -hmm. And they were talking about how the snowfall in Westfield, New Jersey, is going to be horrendous. And I'm like, oh my God, are they referencing that? Because, you know, WandaVision is a Disney product. Right. <laughs> um, you know, nobody else at home caught into that. But, uh, uh, you know, Captain America is the only person I can think of that rivals the, the, the fan reaction and the fan love um, and is at that level at the center of, of that universe that could be brought back, that we don't expect to be around right now because as far as we know his story was over but we also know chris evans just resigned with marvel i mean to me the only thing that i could think of i still wouldn't put it close to seeing luke skywalker show up but i would put it in a realm close to it is if you remember how in uh house of m she said no more mutants right and then yeah. all the mutants disappeared if she says the words mutant and it opens up different realities, and there's a reality of mutants, and all you see step out of a portal is Magneto, right? Like, maybe his face is kind of, like, blurred out because they didn't cast him yet officially, mm -hmm. um, but, like, he's just reaching his hand out to Wanda, and then it... Like you, or you just see, like, the helmet from the side or right. some shit? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, and he reaches out to her, and then it just fades to black. Like, to me, something like that would be like, oh, my God, I didn't expect that. That would do it. But, like, seeing Quicksilver again, that wouldn't blow my mind. There was some leaked footage of Quicksilver. I didn't watch it, but I know it's out there. So yeah. fair warning to anybody that's like trying to avoid spoilers. Uh, I believe it. this episode leaked already. And I think and it's I, the one I with think, Let's not get further into that then. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. even, I want to know as, as little as possible to be. I'm with you. Surprised. I like being surprised. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I think geekosity.com talked about, I think it was Geekosity, uh, the website, says something about. Um, Olsen was filming scenes on Spider-Man 3? Uh, yeah, yeah we that's about believable. That. Yeah, and she, we do know that Evan Peters is in uh, this show. What you call really? it? Really? Yeah, he know he's in it, but that, that's it's confirmed. Fact. We don't know yeah. if he's, is he Quicksilver? Is he somebody disguised as Quicksilver? Is he is Mephisto? He Mephisto? Or, right? <laughs> yeah, boy. No, you already know. Pete. This is why we're friends. <laughs> exactly. Um, but no, I mean, to me, even if Hugh Jackman showed up, that's not big enough to trump Luke Sky. Like, there's just nothing they could do that would trump that Luke Skywalker reveal, man. And that's the thing is, like, there's a lot of things that they could say that, you know, like, oh, maybe, hey, Wonder Man. But most people are going to be like, who? Like, you and me, right. we're, we're all like, oh, cool, Wonder Man. Uh, right. But, like, I, I don't know. I just, I can't possibly unless, think Unless of... it's the Marvel, the MCU guy that looks like Pete. Who? <laughs> Who's that? I don't even know. Uh, I mean, like, honestly, it's... if they brought back Chris Evans as Captain America, but I think it's too, like, his signing with Marvel is too early for him to be okay. put into the series. Like what that about, would make more sense for him showing up in the season right. finale of Winter Soldier and Falcon, okay. or Falcon and I, Winter Soldier. I just don't well, know see, what oh, could possibly I, I be like important that, but... enough that would like warrant <laughs> a, a Luke Skywalker kind of reference or something. Like I, 
I don't I don't know. <laughs> what about what about Robert Downey Jr.? No, that would work too. Like him being back, but I don't he, think I think that's gonna be a while. Skywalker level? No, no. He, he, here's, here's the reason why to me it wouldn't shock me as much as that is we all believe at some point they will bring him back, right? Yeah. So it's like it's just the inevitable. It's it's the waiting till we get to that point. The simple um, reason is everybody. I mean, who doesn't like a forty million dollar paycheck? Right. I'll play Robert Downey Jr. for one million dollars. I don't right. care. I'll, I'll do it for I, one. I dollar. would take. I would take six million from each Marvel actor to give it all to Robert. <laughs> to, to bring him back. Um, but no. I, look, if Fantastic Four pop up at the end of at the end of this, I I'd, I'd probably shit myself. Drop but, some names. That's all I get. That's all I ask. Drop some well, names. They already they already did shit. a little bit. They already did a little bit, Pete, with the mention of uh, some pieces yes. going up that hasn't come back yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. All right. So, so what if tease. what if instead of the mask of Magneto. Maybe it's the mask of a Galactus. People were confusing the cowl of Grim Reaper for the cowl of Galactus. That's true. They, they are kind of <laughs> similar. There's like a little angle difference, but my yeah. only issue is Galactus shouldn't be brought up till Fantastic Four exists. See, but what if Galactus is the harbinger for Fantastic Four? Like they sense the threat coming, kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, with that, we could just get a, a CG Silver Surfer. That's what I'm we saying. We don't even need an actor right. at that point. You said you said grandiose. Who's yep. who's bigger than fucking Galactus? That's, That's true. That's true. But to me, the, the, all right. So specifically, what I mean is everything about that Luke Skywalker moment was iconic. The mention okay. of her looking at the machine and going, there, you know, I, there's incoming, and then you just see the one X-wing. The one X-Wing told me everything I needed to know. That's that's fucking Luke. Okay. So what's uh, the one element that stands out? Is it Captain America's shield? Is it Iron Man's hand? Is it the emblem of the four on the Fantastic Four? Is it Thing's hand? If you want to go CG and you didn't cast the person, maybe it's right. Thing's hand or, or, or Thing's profile, right? I, um, I would say something comparable, like I said before, would have to be something about when she uh, when she breaks reality of us getting of us seeing a multiverse where x-men exist hmm. um, but we know we're not going to get the x-men before the fantastic four a, a hundred right, there, but i'm saying just seeing magneto opening that door for it to be fully kicked open you know down the road um and remember this also everyone's assuming that we're not getting x-men anytime soon because he didn't mention it but he could have not mentioned it because this show is the opening to X-Men. And if he mentioned it, we would have put too many dots together. Because uh, remember, this story is House of M. It's, it's, it's uh, the West Coast Avengers comic of, of, of Vision. It's assembled, so it's right. So many, it's so many different elements that we would have went, wait a minute, if he announced X-Men, what if she does say mutants or no more mutants or something like that and we get them? Mm -hmm. So it would have been a bit of a spoiler. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, I mean, that could be the case. The fact well, is, I'm sorry, uh, Pete, yeah, for a second. The West Coast Avengers storyline where Wanda went bananas was different than the Disassembled storyline. Right, right. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought right. And then leading into the Disassembled line, Wanda had a relationship with Steve Rogers for a minute. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say for maybe about uh, three or four issues in Cap's book, Wanda was, uh, was a side character as a love interest. And then they went right into Disassembled. Oh, shit. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, to me, I, I don't know. It would just have to be something iconic. Like, it can't be something that's great for that moment. Right. It has to be iconic. Okay. If you're talking about topping, seeing the Luke Skywalker we've been waiting for since he killed Vader. Like, a Luke Skywalker that's that powerful, that's what The Last Jedi didn't give us. You know what I'm saying? Something so that's, that's going to make a big enough splash with a lot right. of ripples. Right, right. See, the thing is, like, going off of the Luke Skywalker thing... Like, we are so used to, almost desensitized to the fact that we get all of this information on the internet and everything, and we're like, oh, we figured it out, or it's been revealed or spoiled or whatever. Nobody knew about Luke Skywalker. Nobody. Nope. Right. That I was a surprise to everyone. The actors so, didn't know either. Right. Dude, the, the so name Luke Skywalker wasn't even in the script. Right. Nope. So nope. Hollywood actually can keep a secret when they want to. Yep. Right. Like Mark Hamill to fucking tweet out, hey, anybody see anything good on TV lately? That's that's a trip. Like, 
hey, you, you played us. Gr- good job. Like, yep. it's so hard to do these days. Yep. But that's I'm all I'm for saying. that. That's what I'm saying. And, and to your point, you were just talking about, and again, we don't need to rehash it, but you were just talking about potential spoilers of upcoming episodes of, of, of WandaVision. So it's like, if that's already out, two weeks from now, somebody will leak what this, this big thing is. Hopefully not. Uh, How many more episodes do we have? Uh, we're on four, so it's five, six, seven, eight, five more. Okay. So it's nine. Yeah. Okay. It's That's nine. a weird number. Very weird number. But oh. this is from the show that if you pay attention closely to the background, all the clocks have the sixes removed. Yeah, it has made sixes. I know. So it, 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 this show likes to be weird. I, I'm uh, with you on that theory already, and I hope it's not a red herring. I, you know, you know, Pete, I've given my, and it's funny, I'm actually about to use this term. I've given my soul to the idea that this is Mephisto <laughs> behind everything. So if they come out and they're like, oh, it's Nightmare, I will be levels of angry I've probably never seen myself get, you know, because it's like. The worst wow. master pandemonium. Man, That's a, even worse. Shittier. Like, why yeah. not just Mephisto? Like, what? why would you play around with it and then not just give us Mephisto? You know what, though? We're all so used to kind of you know these fan theories of ours that people have been coming out with since like agents of shield was in season two Mm. you know we we come up with stuff and then it never comes to fruition but we also have to remember that agents of shield for i enjoyed the show to say what you will about it but it was uh you know it was separate from the regular mcu this is dead center in the mcu this is kevin feige doing this shit so it's imminently possible that we'll actually see a genuine big reveal what right. that is, obviously, we're still guessing. But I mean, I haven't. I don't remember the last time in the. In, well, that's a lie. With Iron Man, that was that was huge. I remember thinking, I'll never see anything this dope. When Fury comes out of the shadows and he's mentioning the Avengers, and you're like, no way, no way are they going to build the Avenger universe, right? Like, there's no way they're going to do this. And then I think the the other big reveal was Cap uh, being able to wield uh, Mjolnir mm-hmm. and then saying Avengers Assemble. Like, it's been small things like that. Seeing Thanos at the end of the Avengers movie. I remember yelling, oh, shit, in the movie theater when Thanos turned around. Yeah, I was like... <laughs> I remember everybody in the theater was just like, who is that? And I'm like, you have no idea what's coming. Like, you have no <laughs> idea. None. I screamed like a girl when Cap picked up Mjolnir. For sure. <laughs> and and sure. then... And I look as much as a GI Joe fan, I am an Avengers fan and hearing him say Avengers assemble and saving it for that moment yeah. was just like, <gasps> cause I remember it's funny. You say that, Jake, I remember at the end of the oh. first Avengers movie, I was pissed. Cause I'm like the perfect moment was when they're all assembling together and they're all in that circle. Like when he's giving out directions I thought that was the moment to say Avengers assemble. And when he did, I was like, all right, maybe it's for the next Avengers movie. It wasn't in that. And I was like, yeah. All right. Infinity war. It wasn't in that. They teased like, you mad times. I was like, of are course. we never going to get yeah. this? <laughs> Remember it was at the end of that second Avengers movie where he goes Avengers oh and then it cuts to black. Yep. And I was like, yes. really? I'm Josh getting Whedon? goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps <laughs> right now because it's just, it was delivered so subtly, you know. Avengers, awesome. I'm like, oh. you know, we're all gonna go watch that shit on Disney yeah, Plus. Like, right oh, this, this, this is the perfect moment. marketing for them. But, <laughs> look, Jay, to your point, the reason why that, the reason why I understand why Kevin Feige waited to deliver that line is that line, that line could work with five Avengers. That line extremely works with nothing but every hero assembled. Yeah in the MCU at the time that line hits and he didn't even deliver it the way that we're used to hearing him. Right. Deliver it. Like it was very subtle. Like, like he seemed like the guy from lethal weapon. Like I'm too old for this shit. Like I, <laughs> right. simple, so I can go home and sleep. Like, <laughs> like that's what it sounded like, but it was delivered so beautifully that everyone, every geek was just like, Oh my God. Yes. Like finally, and then you give us that beautiful fight scene uh, th- that kind of caps it all off. But yeah, when when you see the the hammer kind of just like zoom past, Boom. I'm like yep. I'm like it zoomed past Thor, uh, Thor. I'm like where the hell is it going? 
and you see cat grab it i'm like don't you play with me <laughs> we was on <laughs> some can... looney tune type shit where like the the cartoon character's banging his head against right, things exactly like... yeah i was like <laughs> what you... are you doing did you notice the subtlety in the way cat caught the hammer and the difference between the way thor caught the hammer when thor catches the hammer he reaches out to grab it when cat caught it he catches it like he catches the seal you know yeah. to absorb the impact and i was like right. oh. It, it's kind of like when you shoot a gun the kickback so where you have right. to, yeah. where it's like yeah. oh my god I almost blew my shoulder out <laughs> like like that's how cap kind of caught it and it was like that was beautiful that was and beautiful. i heard something uh just recently and i don't know how true it is um but the the uh tony snap i am the line i am iron man was ad libbed it was ah. it, yeah. Where, where, how do we where do we know this i i, I wanna... the, the russo brothers and robert downey jr both said it they both said really? That it, really yeah that wasn't the original line like the the original scene was just him snapping like it was a subtlety of just a snap but i think they said robert downey jr was saying no no i heard it was a uh, somebody in the production team uh, uh thought it up and then they were like oh we got to shoot this the next day but again i didn't I, you know i'm yeah, no. As far from, as I'm finding out, this is conjecture, but I, I'm right, like, so what? this is this is the truth. It was improvised. That's, That's the great. Truth. That's but great. I did hear, like, and again, it, it could be different things, but the truth is, it was improvised. But I did hear that Robert Downey Jr. was kicking around, like, to to the Russo brothers of ending it how it began. So right. you began right. the MCU by I am Iron Man, and that right. sending shockwaves through the MCU. So it was the idea of ending it how it began. And I, it I, I can I can believe the whole ad lib stuff to it because I know Iron Man One was ad libbed. Right. I know, right? Um, pretty much, um, um, Favreau and and Robert Downey Jr. They were workshopping it almost every night. And Jeff Which Daniels, I didn't like by the way, I was the only person in the theaters that was piping angry. Um, oh, I loved I, it. I grew up on the Iron Man that was. That thought we were stupid enough to believe his, <laughs> was body his bodyguard was Iron Man, mm -hmm. and he had nothing to do with it. Like I, I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and as soon as she said the line, "Oh, we heard rumors that it was it was your bodyguard," I was like, "Yes, good job, keep going." Yeah. And then when he threw the card, and was like, "I am Iron Man," I'm like, no. "That was great. Oh. I love that." <laughs> it goes <laughs> with his, his if you think about it, if you think about it, nobody in the MCU. Uh, at this present date has a secret identity it's all out in the open i don't like that i don't like the idea of that. i hate yeah. that so i was just like that's true that's reflective of a lot of marvel comics and that's a discussion for another day where like you know they all call each other by their first names yeah. in the comics yeah. and it's that's a relatively new thing over i would say maybe the past decade give or take yep that and it was with all of these and crossovers and shit, man. Like everybody um, just too used to each other. I got an answer to that. I'd love to hear this. None of them have families that they got to wear a mask to protect. They don't. Wait, in the MCU? Yeah, Iron Man is single. Steve Rogers is single. No. Thor is an alien. No, because remember, remember when? Um, remember in Iron Man three, they went after Pepper. They went after Pepper. They went after Happy. Uh, okay. Spider-Man has but that, but that was friends. That was after Spidey's the only he'd one. already been established. Peter's right. the only one that keeps his identity secret. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. Yeah. No, I give you that. Yeah. Peter. Right? Yeah. Pepper's got her own damn arm right now. The, the government knows who, who Ant-Man is, right? Um, and she lives with a cop. So, you know, she's protected. Um, uh, stands the reason the government knows everything because S.H.I.E.L.D. does. Yeah, right, because Fury yeah. knows everything. So Fury is just right. like, okay, I got my eye. I know what's going on. I know what's happening here. And that's what the whole Civil War was about. Cap didn't want to give up that information, and Iron Man was like, that's what will protect us. That was what the original Civil War storyline was about, man. Right. That is true, yep. Um, all right, we got to get into some more of this stuff uh, yeah. the, on the next episode, where we're going to build sure. out what we want to talk about for the next episode. But this was great. I, I love this geeking out. We talked our figures. We talked some G.I. Joe. We talked yeah. some Snake Eyes. I've been dying yeah. to geek out about Snake Eyes with somebody for the longest. <laughs> um, so I'm glad I, I know I have two guys I can geek out uh, with that stuff about. Awesome. Um, Definitely. 
But uh, no, we got to do this again, man. This is a lot of fun. I'm down. A yeah, lot. yeah, me too. Me too. So, I'm down, fellas. Let let let's plan for let let's plan for when we want to do the the next episode. But this is a great first episode of Figure It Out. Um, <laughs> that sounds crazy right i like it um, i like it I, I do like it and you know what what we can do is okay so figure it out we just find a way to every episode we we talk about uh figures uh at, at some, some sort of new toy thing i mean yeah. i mean there's new toy shit coming out all the time oh well, i i well. just put the pre-order in for my thunder tank so we can talk about that no, i was time. just gonna say that dude i did it i did it today i, I was like but i'm gonna close my eyes and just hit send <laughs> oh my god dude, um, uh, bro we, we, shh, we're saving up for a house i can't really expense something like that but i want to <laughs> don't look don't tell me shit like that i'm an enabler i'm awful with that right? i would it's tell like, you like do, do it, it. Do it. I'm that right little on. asshole devil on the side of your right shoulder. Like, no, just do it. It's okay. it's fine. It's gonna be okay. Dude, <laughs> Dude I didn't I didn't get Jabba cell barge, right? Um, I I didn't get the the USS flag when I had a chance to get it cheap. Um, uh, I didn't get the the Marvel Sentinel uh, on Hasbro Pulse, mm-hmm. right? Those are all you know yeah. mid mid uh, uh, four or five hundreds, right? right? And I'm just like, I don't know, man. That Thunder Tank is looking. Yeah, it is four Drop. times the size of the original Thunder Tank. No, you could put six figures in there, <laughs> dude. If your girl gets mad, just blame me. She knows I'm a goon already. It's fine. <laughs> I will take that. Yeah, I can't no, have you on her shit list. She'll <laughs> never be allowed over. It's bad enough. I fed you crickets. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are too much. You guys are too much. We'll get more into this uh, next <laughs> week, and we'll also get into my obsession with uh, these Mandalorian figures that are coming out soon. Oh, um, man. So we'll we'll get into we'll get into all this next mm. week. But uh, all I'm able to find is that Cara Dune. I haven't been able to find oh anybody my else. God. Wait, wait, wait! You can't find anybody else. No. Amazon. Amazon. I don't want, dude. I I don't want to pay. Uh, um, uh, second, second market, uh, uh rate. Wait, how much did you pay for Cara Dune? Dude, um, retail, what was it? Uh, I think these are what 15 or 16 at Walmart. Okay, all right, they're I not the 12. Yeah, I see your point. I see your point. Yeah. I see. Where'd you, where'd you get that, by the way? Uh, I got this in a Walmart in Long Island. Damn you, Walmart in Long Island, having all the damn it, Long Island. That's the key. <laughs> Just damn it, Long Island. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, they're releasing all the, um, uh, all the new Mandalorian figures, like Mando and his all new armor, uh, yeah. Grogu. They're releasing a small little Grogu um, that comes in the pack like that. Also, uh, what's the main bad guy's name? I'm completely blanking here. Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon. Yeah. Uh, it comes with the dark saber. Uh, nice. Also, so I I've, I've been reserving all this stuff. I'm blowing a fortune on all of it. Soon I want I want Dad Bod Boba Fett. That's what I'm. <laughs> oh man, you know what? Give you me know that. what I don't like. You know what I don't like about uh about when they make figures? They slim them down. No, give me that full <laughs> yeah, dad. Yeah, right. Even if the belly has to hang out a little bit, I want that's that. what I want. That's what my I want. My shit does. That's I want I his want. too. With, yeah. yeah. With removable helmet, so I can get that scar to more and more is in uh, uh head. I want yes. that. Yes. Uh, you know what? I also want them to release because they've been releasing a lot of these Star Wars figures, and the last time they released a Star Wars vehicle. Uh, like like a like any kind of vehicle was with uh, the Poe Dameron figure when they did his um his okay his the black X wing right mm. to me I want the slave I, I want the slave and I want Mando ship I want Mando ship yeah I got the slave from Shadows of the Empire so I got a slave uh, yeah yeah that's deep yeah 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 but I you know I wouldn't I was not gonna pull the trigger on that Razor Crest from Hasbro Pulse it just didn't do it for me really. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not fond of that shit. Because to me, I want to know how if if they do do, um, if they release the vehicle for for Mando ship, how are they going to do it to where you can put them where you can put them in? On the six inch. Yeah. No, they they can't do vehicles on six inches. Yeah. The, that, the price point. The oh price no no point no no no! I mean the three point seven five. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, the three point seven five. I don't know, but he's out. You know, they they sold. 
they sold uh, a half a million dollars on that fig on that shit God. on Hasbro Pulse. Yeah, Damn. yeah, they released. It could, open, uh, it could open. I don't know. I know it came with three different incentives. I mean, they hit three stretch goals, mm -hmm. so it came with, um, uh, you know, the silver Mandalorian armor with a real cloth cape. Uh, oh. The figure, the three point seven five, doesn't come with the cloth. Why do they not do cloth yeah. anymore? Like it's yeah, so I don't frustrating. Know. Yeah. Can I just yeah, interchange so, this for a second? That yeah, of course. If you know you're saying that they can't do vehicles on six inch. And if this Thunder Tank is any indication that, in fact, they can, uh, uh. the heinous, debaucherous, horrifying things that I would do uh, to get a six-inch worthy Sky Striker or a Hiss Tank for these G.I. Joe classifieds. Um. And, you know, with the, the amount of figures that are coming out in the line this year and okay. next, Come they've on. got planned. Let me show this. Okay. Uh, one can only hope that this happens. Pete, you need to buy a, a 3D printer because there's guys 3D printing Skyhawks six inches. Oh, God. What is that thing? What is that? What, what, what? It opens here where you can put someone in there. Oh, shit. You can put someone in here. Also. What is that? It's from G.I. Joe. I got to look up what the, what the name of this was. I got it as a gift. It opens here on both sides. And then here's the coolest part. Ready? Oh, shit. Did someone break this? Oh, no. Yep, there we go. <gasps> Where'd that even pop out of? Holy <laughs> shit. So you push it back down oh. into here. You push it back down into here. And then you hit that button right there. And it's the fuck out of it. That's awesome. That came from the movie, didn't it? Yeah, it had yeah. to be. Yeah. That's cool. And then look, here's I the like even that. better part. You can put figures in here. Both I love those that. Front parts That's open up. dope. You I know, it's well, it looks, it, it kind of looks like the transport from Aliens. Yes, uh, it does. The, the yes, space plane transport. Yeah. And you, you got, you guys know what's crazy? I got that from a comic book shop. Really? Okay. Yep. Yeah, and it comes with uh, add-ons like like missiles. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, a whole bunch of other stuff, but yeah, I'm gonna get you guys the info on that, but. Yeah, when we were talking vehicles, I'm like, yeah, I have to showcase that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, all I, just give me a, a Sky Striker, a Cobra Raven, a Hiss Tank. I, I'll pay money for vehicles of, of size. Like, shit. I guess I, guess I, sh I shouldn't show you any of my dioramas then, should I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. Here we go. Here we go here, guys. All right. This is a, a what is happening here? A, what is this? Oh my god! So this is a tower. Um, all right, three levels. All right, uh, we got we got our different staircases. We got our water barrels. We got our we got our thrones. Um, we got our we got our trees. Um, you know, whatever I can't find out there, I make, and uh, I, I make it from two foot by two foot um, insulation foam. You made that? I made that, dude. That's amazing. How the yeah. hell do I know you for four or five years and you never showed <laughs> me this shit? Bro, this, we were going to debut this at New York Comic Con when we were going to promote our figures, bro. Oh, so this was the idea. figures were going to be displayed in here. You know how San Diego Comic Con would always have these great big displays for for the Marvel Legends and for the, the yeah, Marvel sure. figures. So we were going to do that to display the figures that I'm go, releasing. Do you guys go to New York Comic Con as press? Yes. Uh, okay. As, well, as Jay's an exhibitor. Oh, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I, I've been I've been writing comics for the last twelve years. We're talking more about that next week. A hundred percent. hundred percent. He's got toys coming out. <laughs> you got two are they three point seven five? Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah, Why do you think are. I wanted him on this show? I was like, if anybody's a G.I. Joe fan, it's this motherfucker. Uh, Let me yeah. see it. Oh my god. Over to the, Wait, there we go. Oh my god. Yeah. That's exactly the size that I, I have everything I have in. And he's based on, on one of the books that I write uh, called Shield of the Interceptor. Oh my so, 
Uh, yeah, so we uh, we've got quite a few figures. We have um, we have uh, base six the... figures, um, <laughs> and then we got uh, troop builders, which are demons. It's all like that. Unstoppablecomics.com. <laughs> no, we're gonna look next week. We are super plugging this. I mean, super plugging this. So have so yeah, so available. I was making these displays. <laughs> I've been making these displays so I can, I can, you know, promote the figures in it. Uh, you know, we, we put together a little grotto and stuff like that. that is oh dope. God. Yeah, dude. You that know, actually um, looks like the, um, the, um, the, the pond, whatever thing from uh, Age of Ultron that Thor was like bathing in. Yes. That looks a little yes, bit like that. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I'll try to go, you know, I, it's all my own stuff. But when I try to recreate things, I really don't do that well. But I tried to uh, do Mumra's pit so I could put the Super 7 like figures that. on it. That's I like you know, that a lot. Um, Just didn't work out for me. But uh, Looks pretty you know, cool so, from here, man. Shit. I, I love the hell out of that. <laughs> you serious? Yeah. So uh, so we were doing all this stuff, not because you know we wanted to do it, but so we can display our, our stuff within, within that world. Right. Listen, yeah. next week we are digging <laughs> all up in this because I need those. <laughs> I need posters. I need everything so I can hang out right behind me when we do our oh, show. Dude. Bro, I'm still bugging this guy for the Kickstarter posters. for this. You like, want I, posters? We, we got posters, bro. Hell yes. Yeah. I'd hang them up right here. Promote the hell out of those. All right. We're, we're gonna talk. We're time. gonna talk more. We're in a group chat. We're gonna talk more. Don't we got, talk more we got shirts. You know. Oh my god! Wait. Oh yeah. my god! They look so dope. And you have. It's figures. a good quality shirt. Not for you nothing. Have figures for all of those. Uh six figures right now. And if it pulls off, then we've got other figures that we would like to do. But we got to see if we got to do this first. Oh my goodness! It's definitely going to be Kickstarter because I can't afford the price tag on it. Oh my god. I'm waiting very impatiently for that Kickstarter, <laughs> my friend. Yeah. Yeah. He gets yeah. my uh, Pete gets Keep my updates updated. all the time. <laughs> Keep me updated on that. That's I, I'll promote the hell out of that that yeah. uh that Kickstarter. Are you serious? Yeah. I'll mention that on every show I'm on. Are you, are you, are you kidding? That's what when you said G.I. Joe's, I'm like, all right, if there's one guy I gotta bring in on this. I'm it's glad like... you did. I'm glad you did. Here's, here's another here's another display that we have oh, that going sick, together, man. Yeah, and you yeah. make all of that shit out of like foam core and whatnot. Yeah, dude. Uh huh. Dude, that's so, so ridiculous. Like, I I never knew. Yeah. So one all of the right. things I was going to do was we were going to use that as incentives on the Kickstarter, also. You know, as um, you know, as one offs. You know, like I get a display one- base with it. Yeah. 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 Right? <laughs> Me and people <laughs> like what? You know, um, but they, they were gonna be premium incentives, you know, for the rewards and, and one of a kind. Jay, so. be, before we go anywhere, please let the audience know. Um, I'm gonna be releasing this in video and in audio. Let them know uh, where they can find you, please. Uh unstoppablecomics.com, unstoppable comics on Facebook, unstoppable comics on Instagram, and then my personal account on Instagram. J J A Y the Unstoppable. J the Unstoppable on Instagram. Please follow and in the group chat, send me that so I can go follow yeah. immediately and, and spam you like crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we know we can find you at Pete's Basement, Facebook, yeah. Instagram, and uh, Twitter also. Yes, sir. Um, make sure you guys follow both these two gentlemen. Mm-hmm. I am just so glad there is a pocket of geekdom that I could share with you guys that no one else that I know is even remotely interested in. Mm. Um, so this was, oh man, I can't wait for the next episode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out, baby. Figure this, it out. This was so much fun for sure, guys. So I had a blast, but, man. Absolutely. Great- so everyone, till next time, um, this has been Figure It Out, and we'll see you uh, next week. All right. <laughs>